Say Dick Khan's anti-Trump attitude gets destroyed by Queen Elizabeth. Media shocked. Queen Elizabeth is not putting up with Sadiq Khan's rhetoric, and the media isn't saying a word about it. While the far-left London mayor petitioned to have President Donald Trump's UK visit cancelled, the Queen put his trivial outrage aside and invited the US Commander-in-Chief anyway. Breitbart reports. On Monday, Press Secretary Sean Spicer confirmed that President Donald Trump's UK visit was still on, and that he was personally invited by Queen Elizabeth. The President, appreciates Her Majesty's gracious invitation, Spicer stated. Khan said there was no reason to be alarmed by an increased police presence in London following yet another terror attack on Saturday on the London Bridge. Trump tweeted about the mayor's seemingly incongruous remark about the police presence in London following the attack. Pathetic excuse by London Mayor Sadiq Khan who had to think fast on his no reason to be alarmed statement. Trump tweeted on Monday. MSM is working hard to sell it. Share on Facebook and Twitter if you agree that say Dick Khan is a disgrace. Breaking, the Queen breaks her silence, destroys Muslim mayor with this powerful move. The whole world remains stunned by Western Europe's weak response to increased terrorism. Because so many Islamic apologists control the levers of power in London, Paris, and Berlin. These societies are ripe for another attack. This is definitely true in Sadiq Khan's London. The far-left mayor tried to stop President Trump from visiting the United Kingdom. Fortunately, Queen Elizabeth II invited the American president anyway in a move that many officials have interpreted as a slam against Mayor Khan. British custom frowns upon the royal family making their politics known. Yet Queen Elizabeth II has made subtle hints that point towards a more conservative monarch. During the important debate concerning Brexit, the Queen let some of her inner circle know that she supported the idea of removing the United Kingdom from the European Union. The Queen's invite comes at a time when Khan and Trump have begun jousting on Twitter. While President Trump has rightly pointed out that the UK's lack of an armed citizenry, and London's insistence on taking in more immigrants, is making the entire country vulnerable to attack. Khan has struck back by telling his citizens not to panic. This is the same man who said that terrorism is part and parcel of living in a major city. I'm sure the citizens of Tokyo, Singapore, Warsaw, Prague, Budapest, and Seoul would be surprised to hear that. Mayor Khan's own ties with radical Islamists makes every statement he has ever said about terrorism ring disturbingly hollow. Before he became London's mayor, Khan strove to get the UK travel ban against the black nationalist and anti-Semitic preacher Louis Farrakhan lifted. He also shared the stage with a radical imam who helped to train one of the terrorists who killed several UK citizens during the 7-7 bombings. This is just the tip of the iceberg where Khan's connections to Muslim extremists is concerned. The mayor once spoke on behalf of Alexa, an Islamist organization that published books by Holocaust deniers and drive. Yusuf al karadai a hate preacher. Notoriously, Khan told an Iranian interviewer that moderate Muslims are Uncle Toms. For America, our friend is Queen Elizabeth, not Sadiq Khan. Unfortunately for the people of London, Khan's pro-Jihadi stance is going to get more of them killed. The British people need to know this and prepare themselves for more terrorism. Do you support Queen Elizabeth? Should Sadiq Khan be removed from office? Share this story on Facebook and let us know because we want to hear your voice. First news, the Queen of England was just rushed to the hospital days after terrorist attack. Prayers needed right now England and the world are still somewhat in shock after the senseless loss of life at a pop concert on Monday night. There were 22 killed and 59 wounded at last count after the suicide bomber walked into a concert and set off a homemade explosive filled with shrapnel. The event caused an immediate outcry, not against the terrorist, but against the people who said that the bomber was a terrorist. Despite the fact that ISIS claimed responsibility for the action almost immediately, those who assumed that the overly recognizable MO was that of a terrorist were called racist and bigots. Those who proposed a solution to keep this kind of atrocity from happening again were outright shut down as being unreasonable elitist with the hated profiling tendencies. All of that squabbling and fighting notwithstanding, Queen Elizabeth has kept her mind on what she can do now, comfort those who survived, but are in pain. She took the time to go visit those affected and lend whatever comfort she could.
She also took the time to thank the hospital staff and first responders that have taken such great care of those wounded. While the monarch isn't able to lend any physical help to the hurting, her attempt to reach out and lift spirits is no doubt touching and greatly appreciated. Via Daily Mail, the Queen condemned the very wicked Manchester terror attack as she visited young survivors during a visit to the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital today. The monarch, 91, spent time speaking to Millie Robson, 15, Evie Mills, 14, and Amy Barlow, 12, who were among the, the 12 children rushed to the hospital in the aftermath of Monday night's atrocity. Speaking to Evie, a schoolgirl from Harrogate, Yorkshire, on the hospital ward, the Queen said, It's dreadful. Very wicked. To target that sort of thing. She also thanked hospital staff and paramedics who worked tirelessly to keep the children alive in the hours after the tragedy, and told them of her shock, saying, The awful thing was that everyone was so young. Shaking hands with heroes. The Queen thanked some of the paramedics and staff at Royal Manchester's Children's Hospital who worked tirelessly to help the youngsters injured in Monday's attack. Five remain in critical care at the hospital. Fourteen children remain at the hospital, including five in critical care. A total of 75 people were admitted to eight hospitals following the attack at Manchester Arena. An eight-year-old girl was among those killed when Salman Abedi, 22 detonated an improvised explosive device minutes after pop star Ariana Grande finished performing at the venue on Monday night. Over more than 60 years, the Queen has stepped in to provide comfort for the victims of conflict, disasters, and terror attacks. From servicemen injured in the Second World War to the victims of the 7 7 bombing, the Queen has often visited hospitals in the aftermath of tragedy to show solidarity with her subjects in their hour of need. Today was no exception as the monarch reassured the young victims and their families, and shared in their horror as they recounted their stories of how they escaped the blast alive. Millie Robson, from Co Durham, who was wearing an Ariana Grande concert t-shirt in her hospital bed, told the Queen how she had met the pop star backstage before the event after winning VIP passes in a competition. She was on her way to meet her father, David, at the arena exit when the bomb was detonated. Addressing David, the Queen said, it's not something you expect at all and described the atrocity as very alarming. I'd say that describing the evens in Manchester as very alarming would be a great example of that English understatement. What happened was a gross misuse of a freedom extended to a person whose respect for human life was outdistanced by his belief in a bloodthirsty god whose reward system for killing resembles a sadistic door prize of human toys. Of course it's always best to look on the bright side if you are someone who's had something tragic happen to you, however it's up to the rest of us to see this for what it is, a targeted attack on those who would foster freedom, free thought and any religion other than the one that incites violence. Hopefully seeing these beautiful children maimed will make it even more evident to the Queen that she should put her crown behind making sure this never happens again. Source, Daily Mail Share this if you think that England needs to enact stronger security measures. Second news, new French leader meets with Trump and everyone immediately notices secret thing he did with his hand if today's meeting with President Donald Trump is any indication it's starting to look like the newly elected left-wing president of France Emmanuel Macron will be a thorn in the side of President Trump. They met today in Brussels, where there was a somewhat chilly scene between the two heads of state. President Trump said a few words praising Macron's win in last month's French election and took the time to mention that he looks forward to working with Macron on the War of Terror. They then shook hands and Macron spoke a few words in French. I don't think we need to translate them, it's just probably the same old crap about how the French they then shook hands and Macron spoke a few words in French. I don't think we need to translate them, it's just probably the same old crap about how the French are lovers and not fighters and how they surrender to Islam and most anyone else who will challenge them. We oui, we. Oui. The handshake seemed to be a type of odd stare down to see which would be the first to flinch. Apparently, Macron, who suffers from serious mommy issues, has never heard of Donald Trump. Which seems odd considering he seems to really be into senior citizens. Although President Trump did mention he looked forward to speaking to Macron about the war on terror, just a month ago Trump stopped short of outright endorsing Marine Le Pen during the French elections by saying she would make a great ally in the war on Islamic terrorism. But if the election results were any indication, France, as always, has already surrendered.
CNN. Scores of people were killed Thursday night when a large truck plowed through a Bastille Day crowd in Nice, France, in what President François Hollande called a terror attack. The death toll grew through the night, with Hollande saying 77 people died. Interior Minister Bernard Cazeneuve said 80 people were killed. The driver first shot a gun into the crowd before driving two kilometers along the Promenade des Anglais, the main street in Nice, mowing down people who had gathered to watch fireworks, regional president Christian Estrosi told CNN affiliate BFM-TV. Police shot and killed the driver, said Pierre-Henri Brandet, a spokesman for the French Interior Ministry. Police found firearms, explosives, and grenades in the truck, Estrosi said. We cannot deny that it was a terror attack. Olan said in a national television address. He added that the choice of the day Bastille Day, when France celebrates its post-French Revolution Republic was particularly poignant. He said that the day is a symbol of liberty, and that human rights are denied by fanatics and France is quite clearly their target. Olan recommended that an existing state of emergency, put in place in the wake of the Paris attacks in November 2015 and due to expire later this month, be extended for three further months. So far, no group has claimed responsibility. Anti-terror prosecutors have taken over the investigation, according to BFM-TV, citing the prosecutor's office. Leaders around the world have denounced the brutal incident. U.S. President Barack Obama issued a statement saying, We stand in solidarity and partnership with France, our oldest ally, as they respond to and recover from this attack. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tweeted, Canadians are shocked by tonight's attack in Nice. Our sympathy is with the victims, and our solidarity with the French people. Brazilian President Michel Temer tweeted, It is regrettable that on the day that eternalized fraternity is the motto of the French people, an attack destroyed the lives of so many citizens. The United Nations condemned what it termed a barbaric and cowardly terror attack in Nice. India shares the pain, and, stands firmly with our French sisters, and, Brothers in this hour of immense sadness, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeted. As Asia woke up to the horrific news, India, China, and South Korea's leaders added their voices to the chorus of condemnation. During their press conference, Macron added he wanted to speak to President Trump about the biggest threat facing the world today, global warming. Are you kidding me? Did global warming cause 22 young girls to die by a bomb filled with nails in Manchester this week? Did global warming cause a Muslim to ram a truck into the 84 people he killed in Nice, France last year? On what planet are these globalists like Macron living on? It can't be the one the rest of us are living on which we see constant terrorist attacks but the followers of the religion of peace. If you support President Trump's war on terror please share. Please do not forget to subscribe and like and comment because we want to hear your voice and thank you for watching.